Welcome. This is Professor Gerda Pujol um, from the University of Central Florida, and we're back here discussing contracts. Um, we've seen that for there to be a legally enforceable contract, generally speaking, common law rules are um, four elements have to be met. We've talked about there being a voluntary offer and acceptance. We talked about the parties being uh, having legal capacity of uh, being of age, or if minors ratifying the agreement um, upon reaching the age of majority. Now I want to talk about the other two elements of a legally enforceable, legally binding contract. Lawful purpose simply refers to um, that the contract not be for some illegal activity. Now here are courts, it's interesting. Um, courts make these very fine distinctions. Sometimes it'll be, um, uh, you know, without getting into all the details, sometimes courts will make an exception to an exception. But the basic idea here, right, is I call this sort of the breaking bad uh, rule. You know, if you're making a contract to manufacture and distribute, you know, some highly dangerous illegal substance uh, like crystal meth, that's in, in, you know, in unlawful purpose. And courts are not going to use their power to enforce those type of agreements, generally speaking. Um, and so uh, contracts have to be for a lawful purpose. And very interesting uh, side debate is, um, you know, sale of human organs. Congress enacted a law in 1984 that makes it um, unlawful to sell uh, human organs. But Congress excluded from that definition of human organs, blood. And so there's an interesting question, right? Should contracts for the sale of blood, for example, purchase and sale of blood, um, should those be um, enforceable? And this is interesting because, for example, the Red Cross, when people donate blood to the Red Cross, the Red Cross actually, you know, they, you know, they have bills to pay and they actually sell the blood that they um, uh, obtain from volunteers. Uh, they sell that blood to hospitals. Um, and then you know, the Red Cross uses that uh, in order to promote its uh, charitable activities. But, of course, if you want to sell blood to the Red Cross, you know, maybe you can get a free movie ticket, that kind of thing. But... Um, uh, unlikely, right? You're, you're, they're going to um, you have an explicit co a contract for blood. So this is really interesting. Um, and so this is one of the bonus questions, in the, or not a bonus question, it was the third question in um, our weekly discussion post-assignment. <clears throat> I'm um, uh, going to ask us to imagine hypothetical contracts between vampires and, um, and humans. I, I personally, right, if you were to go into this, this might explain why vampires tend to be portrayed as such violent creatures, you know? Uh, I know there's some good vampires out there, but generally speaking, right, people fear vampires and perhaps for good reason. And I speculate, I've speculated in the past that, uh, um, um, that you know, if these contracts were just uh, lawful, you know, uh, vampires could contract uh, for the uh, purchase and sale of blood. So I'll ask you to opine on that. But generally speaking, right, a contract has to be for a lawful purpose. Finally, we have consideration. Um, and consideration simply means something of value, giving of something of value. It could be money or it could be services. In the case of the Winklevoss deal, um, you know, with, the, um, um, with my, Mark Zuckerberg, clearly Zuckerberg is giving something of value. You know, he's a, he's a really smart computer programmer. He could probably finish the Harvard Connection website. I mean, he ended up creating the Facebook website, right? So he's willing to provide something of value. One of the problems with the Winklevoss contract, though, is really um, what consideration are the Winklevoss twins offering in exchange to Mark Zuckerberg, right? Consider the partnership, the original partnership agreement between Zuckerberg and Eduardo Saverin, as depicted in the movie, right? Saverin is giving consideration. Hey, I'll give you something of value. I'll give you some cash, some seed money so we can start this business venture. And Zuckerberg is giving something of value in return. Okay, I'll give you 30% of the business. We'll split this 70-30, right? So an equity stake, an ownership stake in a new business, that's something of value. Um, what The general rule is this. Courts will not examine the adequacy of consideration. Like, was the consideration fair? Was it a sufficient amount? Was it too large or too small? No. Courts will, generally speaking, only look into the existence of consideration. So even a dollar uh, can be, uh, because it's tangible, because it's there, right? Exchanging a dollar for some promise, right? That will be an um, example of consideration. Whether the dollar is too much or too little, courts won't get into that. They won't second-guess the party's risk estimates and business acumen. But what courts will do is enforce deals and promises only when there's bargain for consideration given by both parties. 
The question I invite you, in fact, I challenge you in this week's discussion post is um, do the Winklevoss twins, did they give anything of value? Um, what consideration, you know, how can they comply with that element um, in their case, right? If they are not able to show that there's consideration, even if they're able to show the parties had capacity, that their agreement was not unlawful, that this was a voluntary offer and acceptance, if there's no consideration, the deal falls through. Now notice, and I'll conclude um, this video on this point, there's an asymmetry here. If you're the plaintiff and you're trying to prove the existence of a legally binding, uh, legally enforceable agreement, you have to show all four of these elements. If you're a defendant like Mark Zuckerberg, all you have to do is really refute any one of these four elements and the whole contract falls uh, to the wayside. Now you can see the importance here and how close this case was. Because if Zuckerberg, for example, is able to show that there was no consideration here, the Winklevoss twins did not really give anything of value, uh, specifically to uh, offer anything specifically of value to Zuckerberg, there's no legally enforceable contract. And if there's no legally enforceable contract, the breach of contract allegation will fall apart, right? If there is a um, uh, legally enforceable contract, um, then the courts can consider remedies. I'll talk about contract remedies for breach of contract in my next video.